the University of Botswana prides itself with the state-of-the-art molecular genetics laboratory. The caliber of research assistants housed in this lab points out the university's specific will to advance knowledge and understanding through excellence in research and its application. The Molecular Genetics Laboratory provides expertise in DNA and molecular genetic testing for both congenital disorders and hematology. But here in the MEPI lab, or the Molecular Genetics Lab, we work on mostly infectious diseases. And so that's going to include things like HIV, HPV, malaria, tuberculosis, um, cytomegalovirus. And the reason why we work on so many different diseases is because we really are trying to highlight um, interaction with an international community. And so what that means is, is we've actually had students as well as other scientists coming in from all over Africa. Uh, we had a PhD student that was trained here from Cameroon. We have collaborators in Ghana, Rwanda, uh, South Sudan, uh, South Africa, Namibia, Lesotho. Additionally, we have people from the US, like for example, I'm here from the United States. Um, because we work with the University of Pennsylvania as well. Um, we have people from Europe, the London School of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene, as well as others that come and go. Um, with regards to the work that we actually do in here in the lab, like I said, we mostly work with infectious diseases, but we also concentrate on a couple of different cancers. Like, for example, um, one of the main projects that we're working on right now is HPV. A lot of people have heard about this and its relationship to cervical cancer. We also work on prostate cancer as well. Um, with regards to our day-to-day -day activities here, we are, again, a molecular genetics laboratory. So what that means is we're working with genetics on a daily basis. One of the biggest things that this leads to here at the University of Botswana, why this is really important, is because science is a collaborative process. And that's something that we really, really, really believe in the molecular genetics laboratory. And what that means is we're always pushing to use what we learn and push it out onto an international scale. Because just like any other country, there's always lessons to be learned on the micro scale as well as the macro scale. So like we've been talking about throughout this whole entire tour, we mostly work with genetic material. So that's DNA. In this lab, we use several different techniques for extracting DNA from uh, infectious diseases as well as from humans. Now, there's ways we can do it that don't utilize machines. However, if we're really trying to get specific and we're trying to get very high quality genetic material, we're gonna use this machine right here. This machine is called the Nucleosense Easy Mac. This is ubiquitously used throughout the world for extracting genetic material from usually viruses as well as humans, bacteria, really any organism that you're interested in studying. And the cool thing about this is it's completely automated. It's actually a robot. And so all you do is you just take your sample, you add a couple of chemicals, you put it in a basically a plate, you put it into this machine, and you can process 24 samples at a time, and it will do the complete extraction on its own. Another interesting fact about this is right now we're all really worried about this coronavirus thing, right? Something that's interesting is throughout the world, Italy, China, the US, this is the exact machine they use to extract genetic material from coronavirus and diagnose patients. What would be of interest to you today as the, this machine right here? This machine is the Quant Studio 6 Flex real-time PCR machine. What it does, it's, it's quite interesting in that it has a variety of applications that are relevant to the modern day microbiology and clinical applications. So with this machine, we can detect pathogens. We can detect um, stuff like uh, GMOs, genetically modified organisms. We can detect um, like your genes, um, micro, microbial resistance genes in water samples. 
so to check the levels of how safe the water is actually and the other thing that is of relevance currently is that this machine can be also used to detect the, the coronavirus that is um, a global challenge at the moment. Malaria research project detects malaria parasites that are predominant in Botswana and data collected is kept for the survey. So what we do is that um, we detect malaria parasite from uh, samples that we collect all over Botswana. So we're interested in samples uh, in malaria parasites uh, plus modium falciparum, uh, which is the parasite that is predominant in Botswana and uh, vivex. Uh, so what we do is that we extract DNA and then the way we view it is that we use this molecular imager. So you, we have samples of DNA that have been amplified using PCR. So they have been multiplied so that they can easily be detected. So what we do is that we use this machine. It, it has UV light that images uh, the samples in a gel. So we put the gel here with the samples put inside the gel and then we view the gel here. Uh, as you can see, this bends here shows that we have positive samples that are whatever par parasites that it are ready be. Khwaneharki, Plasmodium, Falsipara. Insect rearing facilities have evolved from field insectaries with outdoor temperature and humidity to environmentally controlled laboratories that contain insects under high security. The mosquito insectary has a larval growth room where larva from various places around Khaborone are reared in this room until they reach the pupa stage. Through this research, knowing the time in each stage larval takes to grow will help in the implementation of effective control techniques that will reduce the spread of malaria and arbor viruses. And what we do here is we collect mosquito samples from the wild and then we grow them from the larval stages all the way to adults as we can see over here. We take the pupae from the larval insect tree and then we move them into the adult insect tree. Here we wait for the pupae to emerge and then into adults, we then feed them on 10% sucrose. If we want the adults to lay eggs, we will then blood feed them. Only a few people are allowed to blood feed the mosquitoes, not everyone. If the few people who aren't present to blood feed them, we will then use an artificial feeding system to feed the adults. The University of Botswana is a leading center of academic excellence. For them, their actions speak louder than words as they continue to improve economic and social development in collaboration with the government.